Well, I'd like to welcome you to worship here at St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church in Reesburg, Wisconsin. We are worshiping as we are doing these days online, but we're glad to welcome you, whether you're a St. John member or a friend or just someone who happened across our online worship service. We are glad to have you here with us. Um, Last Sunday was installation for Pastor Paula Harris as the new senior pastor here at St. John, and it was a great celebration. We're still kind of basking in the afterglow of that. But here we are in the middle of the Easter season, so that's a reason to celebrate as well. Just one quick announcement as we begin our worship, and that is that we have created a Facebook group and uh, we'd like to invite members and friends of St. John to look in on that. Having you join us for worship is inviting you into the front porch, but we'd like to invite you into the parlor, a place for conversation and sharing together as friends and members. So if you go to uh, the Facebook page, St. John Members and Friends, and like it, there'll be more to follow. And we'd love to invite you to be part of that as it's being unfolded, as we're, as we're uh, learning more and more about how to be church in an unusual time and an unusual situation. And so then I think that means that we're ready to begin our worship service this evening. And uh, you have got the script in front of you on the, on the Facebook page. At least we hope that you have got that. And so we begin there. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on me. Brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And let's begin by singing an Easter. Christian friends, rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. To all the world glad news we bring. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord of life is risen to stay. Death's mighty stone is rolled away. Let all the earth rejoice and say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise we in songs of victory that love that life which cannot die and sing with hearts uplifted high Alleluia 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 Your name we bless O risen Lord and sing to Day with one accord, the life laid down, the life restored. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And were you 
using an order of service this evening called the Responsive Prayer, the Suffrages. And if you have the service book in front of you, it's on page 328. But again, the, uh, the script is there on the screen. And so we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we join with Christians in every time and place, confessing our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I'll invite you to join me in reading the litany responsively. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you, and also with you. And let us pray. Eternal God, amid all the turmoil and changes of this world, your love is steadfast, and your strength never fails. In this time of danger and trouble, be to us a sure guardian, and a rock of defense. Guide the leaders of our nation with your wisdom, comfort those in distress, and grant us courage and hope to face the future through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Not quite sure how good the audio pickup is, probably not quite good enough to hear that outside the building the wind is howling. When we're here, just uh, three of us in the building, it's a little, it's a little eerie. But uh, we're glad that you're safe and, and warm at home. I chose two readings today because I think they have some powerful things to say to people who are in a situation like our situation. And the first of them comes from the book of James at our staff meeting on Tuesday, which we hold by Zoom these days, Pastor Paula used these verses as staff devotion. The first half of the reading is, is law. It convicts you and me because of who we are and where we are and how we have lived. And it begins like this. Come now, you rich people. Probably don't always think of ourselves as rich, but I was discussing some things with my brothers the other day, and my brother David stopped and said, you know, this is a first world problem we're having, isn't it? We're really privileged to have first world problems. So it applies to us. Come now, you rich people. Weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted, and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted, and their rust will be evidence against you, and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasures for the last days. Listen, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. 
I think that addresses us. You have fattened your hearts on days of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. But now the second half of the reading is gospel. And what does God say to us first world problem people? He calls us beloved. And he invites us to be patient in our suffering, promising God will be compassionate and merciful. And so beginning at verse 7 again. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See the judges standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who showed endurance. You have heard of the endurance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then the second reading, just a short piece from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. And here the scripture urges us to be in prayer and thanksgiving and requesting from God. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We'll stop there. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Mother and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was in the seminary, Students were assigned to what was called contextual education. So some of you know how seminary education works. A person with an undergraduate degree, in my case it was biology, applies and becomes a student at the seminary. And there is such a thing as internship. Two really intense academic years, at least at Lutheran seminaries, followed by a year of sort of hands-on learning, usually in a parish some other settings sometimes, but most often in a parish, and then back for a last intense academic year. That's internship, but contextual education is something different. It happened during the academic years. It was an assignment for students to experience ministry in some kind of institutional setting. One year, I was assigned to a halfway house for adult male felons. That was something I'd never experienced before. And one year I was assigned to an inpatient treatment facility for people who had been mandated by the court system into treatment for alcohol addiction. It was an amazing experience. Ever since then I've had special interest in people who are struggling with addiction and the people who work to help them to sobriety. I learned a lot. I learned that alcoholics and people with other addictions are above the average population in IQ. And they are also above the average population in creativity. I went to lots of group therapy sessions. And in those sessions I learned one of the most well known of all prayers. Not quite as well known maybe as the Lord's Prayer. but maybe the most broadly known prayer of modern composition. It's called the Serenity Prayer, and I think you've got it in the corner of your screen. Here is the version of that prayer widely used by 12-step recovery groups like Alcoholics Anonymous. If you know it, you can say it with me. If you don't know it, uh, it's a wonderful prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's a great prayer. It's carried many a person through hard times, and not just addiction, but all kinds of hard times. And it struck me the other day that the serenity prayer is one prayer that we might all want to be praying every day. 
during these COVID-19 quarantine times, if there ever was a time when we find ourselves in a situation that we cannot change, now would be the time, brothers and sisters, now would be the time. And it sure is testing our serenity. Will this epidemic get worse? How long will it last? How hard will the economy be hit? Will I lose my job? Will I get my job back if I've already lost it? Will I get sick? Will my loved ones get sick? How many deaths will there be? Will they hit close to me? Will life ever get back to normal? God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. God, grant me courage to change the things I can. Well, of course, some of that is beyond our control, too, but life around us has changed, often in ways that are burdensome and frustrating. Just going to the grocery store nowadays can be an ordeal. Have I got my mask with me? Huh? How about my hand sanitizer? Honey, do you think I need my exam gloves while I'm going to the grocery store? And now that I've gotten home, what of this stuff do I need to wash and wipe down? Mostly people seem to be wired to dislike change, don't they? God, I don't like all these changes. I don't want all these changes. But give me courage to do what needs to be done. Maybe especially when that means doing nothing. It's so hard, isn't it, to be quarantined at home. Staying home saves lives. You see that motto all over the place. So maybe a tagline for the times of the COVID-19 quarantine is, don't just do something, stay there. God, grant me courage to change the things that I can change. And God, grant me the wisdom to know the difference. You know, even in hard times, people find things to laugh at. And I've seen some really cute cartoons coming online through my email from friends and from family. One of my favorites, I told you, didn't I, that I was a biology major, is a picture of Charles Darwin, the scientist who developed the theory of evolution. And the caption under it, just very simple, and it takes a little while to sort of get the joke, but under this picture of Charles Darwin, it says, if you don't want to quarantine, it's okay. If you could expand that caption, it might say that's maybe not the best idea for you individually, but for the human species as a whole, well, it's a kind of a joke for biology majors. There are people who say the serenity prayer as often as the Lord's Prayer. There are people who attend recovery groups or who are part of other kinds of settings where it's used. And lots of people who know it don't know that the part they know is only just about a third of the whole prayer. Don't know that the prayer was written by a Protestant theologian in the United States named Reinhold Niebuhr. He used it first in a sermon in 1937. And the whole prayer is a really remarkable piece. I thought I would put it all on the screen. It's too long to have in a single slide, but in sections here. It begins in the way that we're used to, or pretty close to the way that we're used to hearing it. God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And then it continues like this. Living one day at a time. We have to do that now, don't we? Enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Wow, what a line. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, and then the last section. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. 
accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Now, these hardships we're enduring together are the pathway to peace. We know that it needs to be this way. We know, too, that there's something beyond the present moment, even forgetting for the minute, for the minute, the next life moment, even for this life, something is coming. God hasn't abandoned us. And if we surrender to God's presence, if we accept the hardship that we're enduring as a pathway to peace, it will take us to the place where peace is. And brothers and sisters, as the scripture said, may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, it is Jesus, Christians believe, who is the peace of God. Let's sing about that in the words of a wonderful old African-American spiritual, Give Me Jesus. together to close our service in prayer. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. 
We ask you to forgive us for all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. As we close our worship tonight, we respond in this way. Brothers and sisters, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We close with a traditional evening hymn. is drawing nigh shadows of the evening steal across the sky Jesus give the weary calm and sweet repose with your tenderest blessing may our Let's close. Comfort every sufferer watching late in pain. Those who plan some evil from their sin restrain. Through the long night watches, may your angels spread their bright wings above me watching round my bed when the morning wakens then may i arise pure and fresh and sinless in your holy eyes glory to the father glory to the son glory to the spirit while the ages run and now brothers And sisters, in the middle of this Easter season, we end this way. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.